So good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our second segment for today on Women Who Rock With Success. We just got completed with the show, and so we're on another show bringing you information um, in regards to networking. This is our second symposium. This is part two, and last week went so phenomenal, and we just wanted to be able to um, allow other women to come onto the broadcast also to be able to share more information, to be able to help you to brand and grow your business. So today we have Kelly uh, uh, Charles Collins or Collins Charles, I'm, I'm, I'm getting twisted up here, but she is our speaker on today and she's gonna be helping us helping us to grow and learn in regards from whatever uh, the background that she has had and her expertise. And so we're in for a treat on this morning. So good morning, Kelly, and welcome to Women Who Rock With Success Media. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And it is Kelly Charles Collins. So you got it right the first time. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> okay. So tell us a little bit about you. Uh, before we get into the, the topic of the, the session, tell us a little bit about you. And uh, what were some of the things that kind of chimed you a little bit to become a speaker? Well, so really, I always want to talk to other women attorneys, speakers, consultants, coaches, everybody, right? Because I am them. And in October of 2019, I was fired from my job as a partner in a law firm because they said they could no longer afford to pay me. And for some people that would have been, you know, something really tragic for them. But for me, I had always been, you know, I'd been watching what they were doing. I had stopped mm -hmm. listening to what they were saying. So I realized that, you know, they were going to fire me. Their problem was though, that they didn't realize that I had already started my own plan. I had already implemented my plan to fire them. So by the time they got to me in October of 2019, right, where I was working, you know, 70, 80 hours a week, being billed out at $300 max an hour, right, being held back from being able to do the things that I know I needed to be doing in life, mm -hmm. I had already started building my speaking business and was making five figures to speak, right, for that same hour. I had already... <laughs> I had already written the first of my four books. I had already done my TEDx, which is now an award-winning TEDx. Come on. And so yeah. I had really put all these things in place and built my brand, my personal brand. And I had been doing this for years and years and years, right? So it's not something that just came to me. And I always say oh. that that moment for many people, um, that moment would have broken them, but they couldn't break me because they didn't make me, right? I had already made myself. I, I always say that, you know, I say to people that I was born to be bankable. And so my brand has always been intact. And because being a lawyer was what I did for a living, not who I was as a person, okay. I was able to move through that. And, you know, I, and I knew that I wanted to start my speaking business. So when that happened, it was just, you know, the universe saying, you said this. I'm gonna hold you to account. Now go do it. Wow, that is so impeccable. That's that that's and I love stories like that. And and as I shared with the um with the previous uh panel that was here last week, you know, we have had some impeccable women that come on to the show, and you you'll be surprised at what they've gone through before. Like one lady, it's it's boss in heels, Heather Monahan. She just started out; she was working corporate America. The next thing you know, hey, we're gonna give you the boot. But here she is now making six figure digit income. And so we love women to. I, I love that. I love that, Kelly. Thank you so much for sharing that because yeah. a lot of times people feel that uh, you know in corporate America positions, they feel that, guess what? Now, since we, you, you know, you have risen to this uh, particular part in your life, now we finna give you the boot. Now it's over because women have, women have been pushed aside, uh, you know, for years. And we feel that we can put you back in the kitchen. No, women have, women can do just about anything. And so yeah. I, that is just such an impeccable story um, that you shared. And I thank you so much for being transparent and open with the audience in regards to that. That's so wonderful. Yeah, so I think can I just say something? Go ahead. Yes. I think it's sure. really important for people to understand too that when those things happen, they're there it's it's something opening a door for you, right? Mm -hmm. So, like I was saying, I was working 70 hours, you know, a week to make multiple six figures. In you know, my speaking business, I sit in front of my <laughs> computer and probably, you know, over, when you're looking at what my rates are, 
you know, over a period of four or five days, I can make that money sitting in my house, right? And so we have to look at these things as really um, doors that are opening. And mm-hmm. while we have to sit in the moment to, to really acknowledge what is happening and really understand why is this happening, we can't stay there. We have to keep right. moving. Right. And so, you know, I was able to replace that multiple six-figure business, you know, as a lawyer, in less than a year and in in the first year of me being a professional speaker. So, you know, it it is really about knowing who you are and just understanding that when those things happen, take them in, right? Understand why it's happening to you, Mm -hmm. but also know that you were built for this. Like we were born for this because I think that women are powerful at their core. So Mm -hmm. you will, you will survive. Right. Absolutely. And so we're going to move on to the next segment, but I, I still want to share since you were saying about moving on. And and even with that, um, we had a guest on the show, I think like 2015 or something like that. She went through, she, she, just to make it make, and I shared this with the panel last week too, because it's still, it's, it's impeccable as to how she lifted beyond that. So she would come in every day, her 17 year old daughter would be in the home. She would always play with her after she get in from work and she would always nudge her with her feet. You know, you know, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. So one day she came in and she nudged the daughter and the daughter didn't move. Okay. No, she did not move. And so here's this mother dealing with death of her 17 year old daughter. Then after the funeral, the husband, I think uh, the one that just passed away, LaShawn Pace, she had went through something like that too some years ago. And so um, her husband divorced her right after the funeral. This woman jumped up. She said, no, this is not the end of me. And so this is the reason why I'm bringing it up about the moving on. She jumped up and she said, well, you know, I've, 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 I've went through two catastrophic events, but I'm not gonna let this define as to who I really actually am. And so the job went away too, corporate America job, all of these things were just a disaster within less than 30 days in her life. Now she has turned all of that over. She's a coach and she's making six feet. And it's not about the income. It's about moving forward. It's about moving forward. And so I've never been through anything like that, but I applaud her and you and all of these other women who can get up from where they perhaps were, I guess, society or a business field that guess what, I've I've done something here because sometimes people will, sometimes people will do things intentionally just to stifle the individual, to stop them, to say, well, you know, we, and and we know we support this supposed to be networking, but I'm saying, all part of it. Yeah, exactly. I'm what I'm saying is sometimes people will do things to create a chaotic lifestyle for people on purpose we can't i I can't get people to understand that some people are doing just a corporate america sometimes even when women are also in a a male dominant atmosphere will also create a a toxic uh, i'll create a toxic environment for you and i'll push you off because i know that you got potential i know that you can be able to move and thrive in this business so uh, you know i I applaud that you and you are an attorney and now look where you are now that is so awesome You know, Diane, the surefire way to make sure that, because yes, people are going to do what they're going to do, but the surefire way to ensure that, you know, when these things happen, and I say when, because they're going to happen, is to have an impeccable personal brand, right? And to have what I call a bankable personal brand. It was the single most important thing that allowed me to make that transition and make that transition so quickly because while I was working, I was building this brand, right? So when I came out, it was like, oh, Kelly, the speaker, right? They thought I had been doing it for a long time. So now when I work with women to help them build their bankable brands, it's really important for people to understand like, who who are you? Because when you lose the job, you don't lose your soul, right? You don't lose your soul. And so if you have a bankable brand, you can go do anything. And you can leverage that when we're talking about networking, you can show up in your power in those spaces and understand, okay, who do I need? What do I need? What skills do I need? What connections do I need to make? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, I'm going to move on. I'm trying to move on. We had um, one of NBC Nightly News, um, and I shared that last week too, NBC Nightly News. She was a producer. Mm -hmm. 
everything just went down. We, we, we don't need you anymore. And then she, she, she had to re identify who she was and she knew she had something. And due to the fact she knew that she same way, three, four, I mean, four, five, six, six digits. And, and, and the women are just thriving. They are thriving. They are not allowing what, what has caused them or to be defeated to stay there. And so, you know, like I said, again, I applaud you all. Okay. <laughs> so we, we want to get into uh, the networking. And so it's important that um, especially as you as a networker, um, you know, you, 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 you're on many platforms. You have the opportunity to be in the presence of so many people. So in your, um, dictionary define to us what networking is because everybody has a different portfolio of networking depending on what type of category that they fit in in business yeah you know it's really interesting Diane because I actually hate networking right and I <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness I hate the whole thing because to me to me what I have been placed in the situations that I was placed in I felt like I was playing um, business card bingo right I go in and it's like oh here here's my card here's my card and for me, like I have a sign on my head because whenever I get in these spaces, I get stuck with the person who will not let you go. They're going to talk to you forever. And that's not the person that you want to talk to. Mm -mm. And it's funny because when I did make the transition, one of the things that I did was I'm going to address my disdain for um, networking. And so I started this community called Ladies Who Leverage. And I said, we are going to collab a source, right? So mm -hmm. I have, we have this whole thing about collab sourcing. That's the way that we network. So what right. that means to me, and when I talk about collab sourcing, you know, in, in networking is leveraging your expertise, your resources, and your relationships to build your business, your brand, and your badassery. In that space, it allows people to be able to determine what is it that I need, right? Without the fluff, without the, oh, I got to get to know you and your dog for six months before I can, you know, even <laughs> tell you that this is what I'm working on and how we can work together. It allows you to determine when you're going into a space, what is it I'm looking for today, right? Am I looking for a person, looking for a skill set, looking for some resources, right? And being able to leverage that in that space. So for me, when I think about networking, I think about it more in a collaborative sourcing kind of way, as opposed to the, oh, let me get to know you. Let you know, we got to do this for six months, this dance. And then we, you know, and I give you my business card. I don't believe in that. I don't like small talk. So okay. that's what I think about it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. So last week we talked about Toastmasters, BNI, and what have you. So, and and that's the reason why I said in your dictionary, in your terms, because everyone has a different um, version of what ne networking is all about. So this is on a speaking type of level, cap collaboration type of level as to what networking. So, okay, everybody, you got to put your little, your, your wheels on because we're going somewhere with this one today, okay? <laughs> okay, so as a speaker, uh, Kelly, how does networking help the flow of your brand? Yeah, so obviously for me, when I'm thinking about people, right, as a speaker, you always want your name, just as a business person, you want your name spoken in rooms, Right. Okay. And so when we're thinking about going back to personal brands and going back to your business brand, you got to make sure that those things are aligned and so that people understand who it is, right, who you are right. and how you show up and that not only who you are and how you show up, but that they believe that you are going to show up right as that person so that when they speak your name in a room, right, they their reputation remains intact. Because we always have to remember that when there's a referral, it's not about you and the person you get referred to. It's the person who's referring you. They have the relationship. They have the relationships that are going to be damaged. Wow. Okay. So when I think about, you know, as a speaker, it's really important to have a particular niche that you're, you know, that you're in. What is it that you're known for? So for me, um, I'm known for unconscious bias, bystander intervention, courageous conversation. So when people hear those topics, right, if they're in a meeting or if they're watching something, people send me articles all the time or something on the news or they'll they'll tag me. Somebody just did it the other day. They'll tag me and say, yeah, Kelly, this wasn't, you know, good bystander intervention because I have created that space in their mind. Okay. Right. And so now 
I have expanded my ability to network because people are networking for me, right? Mm -hmm. They're in their spaces and speaking. Um, in 2021, um, I had my first six-figure month as a speaker because somebody spoke my name in, in a room, right? And so it's so important to make sure that your brand personally and professionally is intact. I had a, a client say to me, listen, you know, I'm just talking to you because I saw your, I saw your website. I just want to make sure it's the same person. I just want to make sure that what I saw out there is who I'm going to get. Right. And so again, it's important for that alignment to happen and for your brand to be so um, bankable. I call it bankable to just be so on point that there's no separation right? Between what we see on social media, what people encounter somewhere else and the person that shows up. Absolutely. Because um, I think, I, th I think it was about a month ago. <clears throat> and of course we had, had a guest on, we always have someone on the show every, just, just too much. But anyway, so what happened was, what happened was there were, there was an individual that perhaps maybe have turned, um, entrepreneur and they were an actress. And so I was trying to find, define the individual. You know, could you send me another photo of who you are? Um, simply because of the fact that there were two types of individuals that I saw, but you were trying to operate in three or four different versions of you. And so that's the reason why I brought that up. Not trying to be condescending to anyone, yeah or not trying to be uh, uh, belittling to anyone, but that was my thing. You're an actress here, but you're an entrepreneur here, which this is the topic and the pitch that we're talking about. So what do, where, where do you belong? It's very important to understand where we belong, you know, when it comes to, um, and I apologize if someone tried to come in and it just, I'm in the middle of this conversation. Um, it's important to understand who you are as a brand. Okay, good. You're an actor, but this is what we're talking about today. You answered this uh, specific um, inquiry according to what you showed me on, on a piece of paper. This is what you showed me. Right. You, you're expecting me to, to identify you in a different way, but this is what I see. Plus on top of that, this is what your website is saying. Your website is saying this also. So now I have it wrong? No. And that's the reason why we as women, we have to be careful. We need to make sure that we specify exactly who we are. I don't care if we're uh, first cousins with Kim Kardashian. We still have to make sure we know who we are. Stick with that one brand. If you have developed something else, you know, like what she's doing now, she's doing attorney as well as a model. She's an actor and what have you. But I think that she, her, her name carries enough weight in order for everybody to understand where Kim Kardashian is. But what I was trying to get this other actress to understand is that you're an actress here, but this is what we're talking about, but you want to talk about this. This is going to confuse these people because they're going to be looking for the actress. Yeah. You know, the, the way to, because I'm like that, right? I'm a multi-passionate person. So I'm an attorney. I'm a keynote and TEDx speaker. Okay. I'm a bankable brand strategist. I'm a podcast host. I'm a magazine publisher. I'm a mediator. I'm an arbitrator, right? I'm all of those things. Right. But for like, aside from the mediator and arbitrator, because those are really separate. All of the other things, the important part about when you're building your brand is that if you are a multi-passionate person, right? Or multi-purpose, multi-whatever you want to call I yourself person right? You have to make sure that there's links. So what happens, I think, is that some people get confused because, you know, we talk about streams of revenue. And so they like go, you know, I'm baking, you know, bread and I'm selling bananas and I'm doing these things. If you're going to have those different things, figure out a way that there is a continuous thread between them so that you can, you can mix and match. Um, <laughs> that's my mom. Uh -huh. <laughs> So that you can. And I'm gonna let can, the other one in too once they come back. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can mix and match, 
right? And and be able to, for people to really see. So like when you were talking to this person, yes, they're an actress and they're doing something else, but how could they have, you know, woven those things together or let people see that there's a through line for the brand instead of we got eggs over here and we got cars <laughs> over here, right? That's when the confusion comes into play. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I was trying, trying the best that I could to try to um, margin her in, but it just was not coming together. And so, and I think that she felt that way too. Yeah. Um, and so we have to make sure it's just kind of, because, okay, so take for instance, we know that you have many multifacets, but when the world looks for Kelly, they're going to be looking for Kelly. This is the TEDx speaker. This is the one that we're expecting to put out the fires uh, through the information that she uh, uh, provides for um, for the world. We'll just put it like that. And so that's what I'm saying is very, very important. So take for instance, if you 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 you're, you're Kelly uh, uh, Collins, Charles Collins. And, but but we see you on television or Good Morning America, and you're learning how to teach the world how to do a coffee brand. So that's gonna really gonna mess people up. And so that's the reason why I um, you know kind of made that mention. So okay, so here's another question. I'm gonna throw this out. How important it is to uh, to follow up behind because we know that you perhaps maybe is not in this type of tech world where you follow up behind your 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 people because you just do just one thing and just what have you. But even we're gonna say if you were not in the space of Rome, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, uh, seems like you're a little bit more uh, digressed than these the other panel last week there all over the place and you're just one room person so kind of uh, share with us if it was if you were like on that type of entry level what would you share with them with the audience as to um the importance of following up yeah you know follow-up is essential because like i said we go to these networking events we're doing business card bingo or phone bingo, however we're doing it these days, right? And we're getting all this information. <laughs> Absolutely. And once they, um, once you um, end up going back, you you don't even remember who you met. You have no idea. And very few people follow up, right? And so they say Absolutely. the fortune is in the follow-up. Very few, few people will follow up. So if you follow up, then you're ahead of the game, right? People mm -hmm. will be like, oh, okay, now I see. So now you can start to make these connections. Now you can start to have conversations around what it is that you really want um, and, and how these people can help you, how you can help each other, right? Because it needs to be a mutually beneficial um, relationship. And when we're talking about collab sourcing, that's the same thing, right? It's about being right. mutually beneficial, but the mm -hmm. follow-up is so important and following up in different ways. So. Um, you know, you can follow up by phone. It's funny because now, even for me, like, I don't think to pick up the phone and call somebody because I'm like, oh, should I call them? Like, um, are they going to answer? Like, is it okay for me to call them right now? When before, when we didn't have all this, right, when we had our beepers and all of it, we just picked up the phone. Like, well, I need to call <laughs> such you just pick up the phone, right? So if you, if you pick up the phone and call somebody to follow up, Mm -hmm. you'll be standing out you know in front of so many other people because other people are not calling you can send something through the mail right send a handwritten note through the mail so think of ways that you can differentiate yourself as opposed to just sending an email thank you most people will do that right some mm -hmm. or they'll do something inside of social media um to do that you know to follow up but if you if you just stand you know stand out call them send them a handwritten note, send them a small, you know, token, maybe you learn something about them, okay. right, during your conversation, and you see something that would be, you know, a connection to that, then send that to them, right, follow up that way. Okay, absolutely. Thank you so much. So what would you tell for what would you say to an entrepreneur that is trying to make a match or a pitch with a, um, a business or a corporation because okay take for instance i think i think it was just a day sometimes people can be in the same field but they're still not a match mm -hmm. and so i was like oh really and so um i had to go back and do my homework and so that's what i try to do 
every time I get onto the show with the women as to make sure that I follow through with their information. And I'm like, oh, okay, thumbs down on this one. I made the wrong choice today, even though they were in the same arena with the topic. So how important or what could you be able to share with the audience the importance of making sure that the match is on target when you're networking and partnering with other business professionals? Well, I think it starts with you, right? Generally what happens when there's a mismatch is that there is, you don't understand your own brand, right? Okay. And so you end up in conversations, right? Or applying for something that you're just like, yeah, I could talk about that. Or yeah, I could do that. But it really has nothing to do with you. We all can do a lot of things now, whether we should is different. So I think it starts with that understanding who you are and what it is that you intend to get out of it. And then when you're having a conversation with someone that you're meeting, understand, I always tell people two things, and this is about having courageous conversations or just in general, right? Mm -hmm. What is my intention? Why am I doing this? Like, why am I going to go talk to this person? I see this person. Why am I going to talk to this person? What do I hope? What is my objective? So what do I hope to get out of it? Right. Mm -hmm. So whenever you go into these spaces, you need to have that. You need to have your intention and you need to have your objective so that when you start having conversations with people, you can realize immediately like this ain't the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. This is not the right match for me. <laughs> now, when you're having that conversation, they might not be the right match. And you can say, you know what? This is a little bit off of what I was thinking. However, I do know somebody or, you know, I would love to hear just a little bit more so that when I leave here there, you know, I can listen out and maybe I can make a connection for you. But I don't think for us that this is a good business connection might be a good referral, you know, networking connection, but not a good business connection. So the only way, though, for you to be able to to really catch that in the moment is to understand why you're there and what it is that you intended to get out of being there. And then you can be like, okay, now I can stop, you know, I can stop the train from, from rolling down this track and you can move on to the next person. <laughs> That's funny. That's cute. Okay. Absolutely. I agree with you. Okay. <laughs> oh, well spoken, well stated. So we're gonna we're gonna get a little bit into uh your brand. We wanna you've already talked to the audience and you've already given them the, the nuggets and the golden tips that they need in order to um to um um defined and identify networking. So we want to get into a little bit about you, about your daily activity as a speaker. So, <clears throat> you know, um, I used to be in the speaker, it was a Facebook group and it was huge. And so these people make not just six figure incomes, it was like seven. I was not there to be a speaker. I was there looking for speakers, you know, on our platforms and, and things some years ago. And, and so it was, it's a lot that goes in with uh, being a speaker. Uh, you know, when you're on a platform, you have to make sure that your messages are is articulated appropriately. So we want to talk about that, uh, of, of you and your experience as a speaker and how that kind of coincides with uh, the people in your audience. Yeah. So I think one of the very important things about being a speaker, so you talk about like six figure and seven figure speakers, is to understand that speaking is a business, right? Mm -hmm. So right. often what happens is I encounter people who say, oh, I want to be a speaker, right? Mm -hmm. But they, you know, like they've spoken at church or they've spoken at their job or they've spoken, you know, like at the community center and they're like, oh, and I just love to speak. Right. That's great. Right. Because that's part of it, that you need to have the passion for speaking. Right. But you have to understand that speaking is a business like any other business. And so you have to, number one, you have to know your stuff. Right. right? So you need to know what you're that's talking awesome about. Stuff. A lot of people, um, <clears throat> they, they are speaking about things and they, I always say they know it wide. They don't know it deep. Right. And okay. in order for you to be a highly paid speaker, you have to know your topic deep, which means that if I'm having a conversation with you, if I'm training you, if you know, I get on stage and afterwards you want to ask me a question, I need to be able to answer beyond Google. Right. right. I need to be able to answer from experience, from, you know, whether that's life experience or business experience or whatever it is, I need to be able to go um, very deep on that topic. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that speakers need to understand um, their value, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Many um, speakers have transitioned from some other 
life, right? Some corporate life. As a lawyer, I was billed, right? My time, I exchanged time for money. Okay. And so when I became a speaker, I had to understand that I'm not exchanging time for money. I'm You are paying me for my expertise. Right. And that expertise is 20 plus years, right? I was a lawyer. I practiced for 24 years as a trial lawyer. So oh, you're wow. getting all of that, my, you know, my mm -hmm. um, ex expertise as a teacher, as a professor, you're getting all of those things, mm -hmm. right? And so, no, we're not going to exchange time for money. That's why my rates are where they are. They're so high because I understand the value. But I speak to a lot of speakers, especially speakers coming in and, you know, speakers that I work with who don't understand that. And so, you know, they'll tell me like, oh, yeah, I spoke for this big company. Great. So how much did they pay you? Like $500 to do what? <laughs> like to do what? Or, you know, there's a very... um awful thing in the speaking industry, particularly they like to do this to black and brown people, right? Speakers, right. and they want you to speak for exposure. Exposure causes colds. It does not put money in your bank account, right? And right. so we got to stop that, right? We got to mm -hmm. make sure that we're not doing, doing that either. But all of this comes with understanding your brand and understanding. So is your brand going to be a brand that, you know, is just going to go out there and just speak however, wherever, for whatever, or are you going to take the stand for who you are and the value that you are and the value that you bring to this world and demand and command, right? The amount of money that you believe will adequately reflect the value. It's an exchange, right? This right. is an exchange. That's right. And so I think that's really important. What else is it about speaking? Um, practice. Right. Make it make sure that that you oh. practice. Um, I speak a lot off the top of my head. But again, that's because I know my topics deep. Right. So I can I can have those conversations. I can have my slides and no notes. Right. Because I already know the topic. But if you don't, you need to be able to do that. And you need to be able to engage with people. Right. I think one of the right. things that happened um, when the pandemic happened so many speakers, some of those same speakers, Diane, that you were talking about that were six and six, seven speakers, bigger speakers, like their businesses tanked. Why? They tanked because they were so used to being on stage and that's how they got their energy and mm -hmm. that's how they showed up. And that's, mm -hmm. and then somebody told them they had to get on Zoom <laughs> and talk to a camera. They were like, yeah. <laughs> not doing that. And so their businesses tanked. For me, just wow. how I am right, this is how I am here. This is how I am on the stage, right? I am who I am. And again, that goes back to just being who you are and not having to put on a show because if you have to put on a show, you got to be prepared for that. And when the, when the, the place where the show is happening changes, that really impacts you. So you, you really have to take this on as a business first and understand <laughs> that if you're running a business, just like any other business, there are things that you need to have in place in order to succeed. Right. Absolutely. I applaud you for that because I'm sitting over here wiggling in my seat, uh, ready to just launch out because w w people don't understand. I'm not a speaker, but people don't understand is that um, one thing I have learned, uh, Kelly, that if I don't want the right, if I don't want the wrong person in the room when I'm doing something, because I do other things, but I'm not a professional speaker, but I don't, when I don't want the wrong person that does not belong in my classroom that's what i do i hike the prices up get out okay you don't belong in this classroom so there's nothing wrong with you increasing the prices the price is supposed to be there simply because of the fact it it, it uh, identifies that the person that pays for your services are the ones that's supposed to be there and that's so right. that's what I've, I've tried to um, help other individuals to understand, you know, and what have you, even when you're writing a book, you know, you, you don't, you don't want to just put your book at, well, we're going to give it away for the first three chapters. Okay. Then everybody's going to come in and going to get your goods. So you have to, you have to, you, we don't give away our expertise of what we have cried for. We have, we have suffered for, we have worked hard for this. is That's not being prejudiced. That's just being honest. And so just like I said, when you had said that, I'm like, oh, here goes someone that agrees with me. Ding, ding, ding. That's right. We do not have any business giving things away 
all the time. There may be some things that you can, some master classes that we can perhaps provide for individuals and what have you to warm up the audience, to let them know, so blah, blah, blah. But look, these prices is finna get ready to go up. If you can't afford it, that means you don't belong in my classroom. Get out. Right. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Today's price, no, but it's true. Yesterday's price is not today's price. And the thing is, you get to decide, right? I, the the problem is that what what happens, and what I always tell um, you know speakers who call me and, and and I work with them on negotiating, you know how to negotiate their pricing. Mm-hmm. To negotiate like a boss means that you understand your numbers. You're negotiating on your numbers, not theirs, right? right? So it doesn't matter what their budget is. Don't matter what their numbers are. You know your top, your bottom, and where you're going to walk away, right? And so what happens though is that we get so you know scared right? That, oh my gosh, if I don't take this, you know, if I don't take this one, I'm not going to get another one. I gave up a whole six figure contract because I was like, no, I'm going to be resentful. Cause by the time I was to calculate how many hours or what I was be working for less than minimum wage. No, I'm not doing that. I am not going to do that. Right. And, and, you know, I've had, um, recently a speaker who I was working with talking to her about, you know, they wanted to pay her nothing. They wanted her to to show up for free. And by the time we were done, they were paying her $20,000. I don't play those games. Like you got to be paid. You need to be paid and you get to decide when it is that you don't, you, you're willing to waive your fee, not them. Mm-hmm. And it was, it, and this was a very high professional uh, speakers association that uh, that uh, that I was kind of a member of on Facebook, and, I, and it's an also a live, a real, uh, you know, brick and mortar place as well. And so that was the, one of the questions. One of the speakers who was just coming out, they were asking one of the other seasoned speakers as to. Uh, you know, when do I accept the money? Then they were telling them, if you got to travel to London, you need to get your stuff up front. You don't need to be waiting till you get to London. And, you know, and that's what I was telling this. Okay, so let, let me explain it in a different way. Let's go back. Let's come back to South Carolina. So this this professional lady, she's a speaker. She's a retired captain. She has all types of degrees and blah, 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 blah. That's good. So, um what this organization did is that they hired her to come to speak for them in South Carolina, which was 800 miles away from where she lived. And um, I get it overexcited. So don't, please don't pay, pay my attention, but it it kind of, this kind of really frustrated me here because I'm like, you've got all of this education. You didn't know any better to not, to 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 check this woman out she waited until the tickets were were were, she was she was trying to pay her in regards to the tickets that were being sold to the event i said no you don't do that and you 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 had to pay she had to pay all of her own expenses up front and when she got there the the event hoster said now look we didn't do so good on these tickets no, this is appropriate question for the for this session today, so people can understand. You don't jump ahead of the game, and so she she told her when she got to the event, we didn't sell but like thirty some odd tickets, and did not even pay the speaker. And the speaker took she she had to pay for her own expenses, her hotel, plus she had to her mother you know, supports just like your mom is doing today. She, she supports her endeavors in speaking and she had to pay for all of that. And when she got to the venue, the, the, um, the hoster, the, the organizer told her that, you know, we don't, we didn't, we didn't do so well on the tickets. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. You need to be a little bit more. Um, and I'm not judging, but that's just me saying that you have all of this expertise. You should know better. You don't leave your house like uh, Judge Million say on the People's Court without writing it down on a, a, a piece of toilet paper. You know better than that. You've been speaking for all of these years and these bachelor's and master's degrees. You got you don't have that much knowledge to know that you don't sit there and let anyone entrap you in a speaking engagement. Like, well, may, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh. I'm gonna no. let you weigh in on that. 
It's funny. I used to practice in front of Judge Millian when I was a public defender. Oh, get out of here. Wow. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, this goes back to your brand, right? And knowing how you want to show up in the world. So in speaking, there's different business models, right? So right. there could, so pay to play, that's, that's what she did. I don't do pay to play, but some people, they want to do that, right? They, especially if they're starting out, they feel that that's a way for them to go. But I okay. mean, again, you're sharing your expertise. It has value. So you have to right. you have to understand that value first and you won't show up in those necessarily show up in those spaces. But some people, some people do, right? That's their business model. Other people, mm -hmm. their business model is, yeah, you don't have to pay me up front, but I get to, you know, sell whatever I need to sell in the back, whether it's books, coaching, whatever programs that I have. And then there's a business model that I have which means that you're going to pay me before I come on your stage to speak, <laughs> right? And you're going to pay, if I have to travel, you're going to pay me my speaking fee and you're going to pay me my travel expenses. There are two different line items, right? Okay. But there are a lot of, again, there are a lot of people who come into speaking thinking it, first of all, they call it public speaking. I'm not a public speaker. I'm a professional speaker. There's a mindset difference, right? There's Wow, mindset. okay. Because when you say public, you think about public, public park, public restroom, public, it's open to everybody. Right. Professional, when you talk about somebody being in a profession, you understand that that person has some level of expertise, mm -hmm. some level of education. You're going to have to pay that person, right? right? You need to hire that person to mm -hmm. speak. And so I always refer to myself as a professional speaker. But for people who don't, people who think about it as public speaking and you know, just like, oh, I like to speak. They're, they're not thinking about it as a business. So what they're looking at is I get to oh. speak, right? I get to show up and speak because that's what I like to do. They're not thinking about it on the business end of it. Like, okay, yes, I get to do what I'm, I like to do, but what is that going to cost me? I'm now paying yeah. you to go speak. Right. I've now put all this money to go speak for you. You know, I had somebody call me and tell me, well, Kelly, you know, during the pandemic, you know, speakers are, you know, you know, just waving their fee. I said, well, that's unfortunate for them because I'm sitting right in front of my computer making multiple five figures to speak and I'm not going to speak for exposure. Right. And so, you know, it, it is that thing of understanding this is a business because right. here's the thing. Here's the thing, Diane. Okay. All the people that are asking you to speak for free, every single person at that event is getting paid, but you. Right. right. They're either getting their salary, you know, for showing up, you know, they're showing up, but they're still getting paid their salary. The event organizer who's asking you to pay, pay, uh, speak for free and all, oh, you know, do this for exposure, whatever they're getting their salary. Everybody's getting paid. But the person who has the expertise to right. share, to make you better and level right. you up. So mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to get paid for that. No, that doesn't work. Like that just doesn't right. make sense to me, right? right? So unless you have a business model that allows you to share your expertise with the knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And not even the knowledge, but almost like the some kind of guarantee that the people in the room are your buyers and are going to then follow up with you for coaching or whatever it is. You've got to make a business decision. This is a business decision. Right. People have asked me to speak many times and I could have been on their stage, but they didn't want to pay. No, I'm not right. going. Okay. No, I'm not going. And people might think, oh, you know, you think whatever. No, I just know who I am and I know where I need to show up. And I know when it is beneficial for me to show up and waive my fee and when I'm just being taken advantage of. And that is not oh. going to happen. Right, because if they, if I, I feel now... I'm I'm just not always a monetary individual, but my thing is if I'm gonna give it away everything away for free, or let's let's put it like this: if a professional speaker is giving everything away for free, then someone else can come in the room and walk away with their brand or with the nuggets that they have. So I mean that wouldn't make sense, and I'm not trying to. I guess I wasn't. I want to say that I wasn't didn't want to be critical with the other example that I was trying to share. My thing was, is that if we're starting out as a speaker, if an individual is starting out as a speaker and you're trying to sell yourself, that's not the way to sell it. Because it seems like to me, what happened was that the organizer sold her. <laughs> that's what it appeared to me is the, right. that, the, that, the, that the organizer sold her off and she, and so, and, and we were going to get something 
you know, um, together. And after I, sh I listened to that story, I kind of felt sympathetic with her and what have you. And so now we are learning that there is a difference. See, then that's something everybody don't understand, Kelly. There's a difference between a public speaker and a professional speaker. Some people don't understand that. And so once I kind of went over that and I'm like, no, I don't think so. I don't. And I wanted to try to help her, but I'm like, no, because this this right here i want to sell this i want to no 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 something is confusing either you perhaps maybe think it's still you're in the military i mean i don't know i don't i don't know but it's i know hard, that though. the whole I, it's hard diane it's hard when people switch right because yeah. what happens is what happens is that because they tried to do this to me right so i was in a big speakers association and people in there tried to do this to me what okay. they said to me was oh you're a new speaker you're a new speaker. So, you know, if you're a new speaker, you should only be charging this amount, or you should really be doing things for free so that you can get exposure. And I'm like, I've been speaking for 20 something years as a lawyer. I am not a new speaker. I am doing this different. I am now going to get paid as a professional speaker, as opposed to being paid as a lawyer who speaks, right? Right. And so when people make that transition, if in their mind, they don't make that transition, then they will fall victim to people saying to them, oh, you know, yeah, come for exposure or, you know, you're oh, new, wow. you're new at this, you need exposure. You don't need exposure, right? You don't need, you. well, I won't say you, don't, we all need exposure, but we don't need to be exposed. Oh, for, right. Right. We don't need to, we don't need to be um, taken advantage of right? Because you think that we are quote unquote new. All you're doing is leveraging your skills in a different way. Right. That's the only thing that you're doing. It's not, you're not new, right? And mm -hmm. if you understand that you're just transitioning from one business, right? So I was transitioning from the business of a lawyer to the business of a speaker. Mm -hmm. And if what I'm doing is speaking so that I can get paid, so that my bills are paid, so that I can live right. the life that I want to live, Right. then somebody has to pay me like i can't that's be right. paying you <laughs> that's right that's right. right so it's just it's mind right it's mindset and identity shifts okay okay and so and i guess that is important and again i guess i'm gonna come down just a little bit lower in things like i said I'm, I'm not here to be condescending toward her i think that's what perhaps she was trying to do she was starting off and perhaps she felt that she was you know that goes back to what we just got through talking about making sure that you're a perfect match Mm -hmm. That's important because if you're not a match, someone is going to take advantage. And I think that's what the organiz organizer did. That organ organizer took advantage of her. They took advantage of the of the of the fact that, OK, you got all of these skills and you're hungry to be a speaker in the public. You're hungry to be exposed. So now here I'm going to take advantage of you. And then here we are. We're traveling 800 miles and you don't want to give me any of the profits. You sold some of the tickets. That's the, that's the problem that I have right there. I have that problem there. But at the same time, I guess I still have a problem with the speaker of not fully doing her homework. I didn't say it to her when she was sharing her. She was crying and things. Kind of felt, I did, I felt sympathetic for her. But my thing was, that's when you, you, you don't know anything about this lady. You do your homework. Yeah. You don't sit there and spend that type of money like that, thousands of dollars, and you don't have nothing coming on return. And like us, like you were saying, you know, it's a difference between the two. Sometimes people are looking to try to be exposed. That's not the way I want to be exposed. I'm not traveling to no Florida, and I know I'm not bringing a biscuit back to the house. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, 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 no. And so yeah. that's the reason why it's very important that individuals understand the purpose. See, now this was a work networking symposium, but this actually is a speaker symposium. Speaker. <laughs> You're training and helping the audience as to how to identify and articulate their own brand. Don't say, don't give yours, don't give yourself away. I would sell myself, but I wouldn't give myself away. Not like that. Oh yeah. no. And so yeah, I it, sympathize. It, yeah. Go ahead. And I, I'm actually glad that we, we got into speaking because there's so many women, especially women of color, black women and black yeah. women who want to be speakers and don't understand their value, right? And don't have a brand. And because they don't have a brand, what happens is they see these, all these things, right? There's all these speaker things out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then, you know, you get so excited. So I, I'll tell you an example. I went on, um, 
someone sent something to me and said, oh, Kelly, we want you to be involved in this. So I went on there and I was listening and they were talking, you know, telling like all the things that you were going to do and you're going to speak on the stage and you're going to have all these people and you're the, right, all the things. So now you're like, yes, yes. Oh, oh, you know, when, 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 right? How do I do this? And then we got to the point where they were like, yeah, so here's the three packages. Like there is, you know, the $3,000 package and the 6,000. I'm like, I don't pay to speak. Like you pay me to speak, mm -hmm. right? But the reason that I was able to then cut that off is because in my, I already know my brand. I know that my brand and my business model is you pay me to speak. If you don't know that, if you don't have that solidified in your mind, when you get into these spaces, we're operating out of scarcity, right? And we're not right. going to do the homework, right? And so, right. you know, she's not alone, right? And her right. story is just a cautionary tale, right? That's a hard um, but there, because you, because you're not thinking like, I am a brand, right? For me, I am a brand, okay. right? right? And so this brand cost money, right? They just did a, an article on me um, in Next Advisor, which is part of Time Magazine, right? And they did an article on me, you know, going from being a fired lawyer, because my, my bosses could no longer afford to pay me, to $50,000 for speaking, right? And why is that being, why was that able to happen in two years? Because I am a brand, right? right? I have a personal brand, I have a business brand, and the two are aligned, when you don't have that, when you don't have that clarity, when you don't have that alignment, when you don't understand the power, one of the things I understand about myself is that I'm powerful at my core. When you don't understand your own power, people can do what they want to do with you. And they can tell you things that all of a sudden just sounds so good that you Come give them free will and Come no on. judgment and That's no right. sense. Come on. <laughs> right? Come on. And you go do these things. And then all of a sudden you're like, now you're crying. It's a mm -hmm. lesson. Yeah, it's a lesson, right? Yeah. But it's, yeah. but again, it goes back to brand and understanding it's a business. Speaking, professional speaking, is a business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that was well stated. That was that was well stated. And like I said, I'm going to say it one more time. Bless her heart. You know, I don't want to be condescending. I just kind of felt that a light bulb should have came on somewhere down the line because that is something that I'm not willing to do. Like we had, I think when we first started the show back in 2014. We invited this individual onto the show and they was like, okay, I charge uh, 50 cents per word. I'm like, you do? <laughs> then, okay, then we'll just have to move on to somebody else. And so we have, it's very important that we know who we're matching up with, who we're partnering up with. So now yeah. that's going to be the next question, you know, and we don't want to call the law firm's name, but I'm pretty sure that they know now since they terminated you that they have lost a valued asset. Yeah, I know they that they do. have. I guess they do. I mean, I have not spoken to, <laughs> to any of them since then. I was a valued asset when I came to them, right? So right. that's the other thing that they, you know, they recruited me. I didn't go for them. They they took me out of Miami. They recruited me out of Miami because they saw what I was able to do. We worked on cases together, okay. right? And so when I was at my other firm, and so they were like, "We want you to come here." They got to the point where in their mind, they were like, oh, we can no longer afford to pay you, which they were right, right? I am priceless. And at some nice. point I, I would have, you know, it would have gotten to the point where they really truly could not um, afford to pay me. But like, you know, women like you're talking about, you know, with that example, the reason that they end up in those situations and coming into the space of being a speaker is because they don't work with, they don't hire coaches, they don't hire mentors, right? So speakers who work with me, right? I am able to impart this wisdom to them. I can help them. I help them figuring out like what your brand is. I help them to build their brand. I help them to understand what their value is in terms of setting their speaking fees and how are you going to negotiate? Because you don't always get what your fee is, but you have to oh. understand if I give up something, there's something else that either you're going to lose something or we're going to do something that I get some exchange, right? Oh. That there's something that's going to meet where we're going to make sure that the value that you're getting mm -hmm. is not at my expense. And so, you know, for women like her and uh, uh, women who are listening, who are speakers, because I work with women, um, speakers, you know, you need to have somebody like me. You need to work with somebody like me to help you to understand right. from the very, very beginning, from the start, right? 
-hmm. how are we going to build this? How are we going to build this business? You know, Jay-Z said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man, right? He is a business, Mm -hmm. right? And so when I think of myself, I am a business, I am a brand. And Mm -hmm. when, when you are a business and a brand, what do people do? They pay you. Right. Absolutely. And so uh, to to kind of piggyback on what you were saying a little bit earlier, you know, when when uh, uh, what was it? What was it? What, it wasn't people. It was Times magazine. And when they were trying to, uh, you know, calculate what your worth was and what have you, that's what people do. That's how you know what you're worth. And sometimes uh, as basically as what you're saying is if you don't know your value, that's how people take advantage. You have to know your value. And that's the reason why we bring coaches, we bring professionals onto the show to be able to help the individuals. No, this is not for free, but you can be able to connect with a coach to can to be able to help you. And even we also share with the with the audience, it's not going to be overnight. Nobody's going to call you for an acting job if if uh, or a speaking job just because Kelly says, "Okay, I want to work that's with right. you." No one's going to call you the next day just because you know p- people are are so um, um, hyped to be on someone else's platform immediately. They don't know how to wait for the sweat equity. You have to burn off some things in order to get to where someone else have gone before you have, you know, in their footprints, their footsteps. And so that's the reason why we bring the professionals on here. Why don't I, every time when I select someone to be on the show, I make sure I read everything that's associated with them, even their little partners or whatever. I try to read all of that. I'll go on the website and and dig out stuff that they probably don't share because I want to make sure that the audience is getting the effective um, information or the effective uh, professionalism it is that they uh, are inquiring. So um, we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about and then we're going to conclude this in just a second okay. ladies who leverage yeah. so that is your coaching your speaking coaching um no it's not okay talk to us about what that is <laughs> so ladies who leverage was my answer to networking right so when okay. the pandemic when the pandemic started um actually prior to the pandemic Um, I wanted to start something called Sisters in Law Retreat. I wanted to bring women lawyers together because I wanted them to understand that being a lawyer was what they did for a living, not who they were as a person. And that there were so many other things that they could do, right? While you're practicing law or thinking about transitioning out of the practice of law. And there was a there was pushback, right? They didn't they couldn't get (laughs) that we could come together like outside of like thinking about the substance of law. And so then I started thinking about what was it that was really important to me and what was important to me was to empower women right to make to to have them understand that you can be in spaces that you can work together we say we don't compete we collab a source that we can actually work together and elevate each other. Right. And so I wanted to create a safe space that they could ask for the things that they wanted and they needed without the business card bingo. Right. That you could really get to, you know, you can you can talk about your business. You can talk about what you're working on. You can talk about what's happening. And in the process of doing that you would build these relationships. So inside of Ladies Who Leverage, it's really Ladies Who Leverage um, as a whole is a community. Within that community, I do mentor women. I do work with women. Bankable Brands Unleashed is where I help women to build their brands. And then there's the Ladies Who Leverage podcast. And then you see behind me, um, our Ladies Who Leverage magazine. And so creating a whole ecosystem around Ladies Who Leverage with the intent, the mission of that is to empower women to connect authentically, build strategically, and to live life unapologetically AF. That is really the mission of Ladies Who Leverage because I want to see women win, right? Mm -hmm. You know, my mom um, Mm -hmm. raised me to believe that I could do anything and be anything. And so that is how I operate in life. And that is something that I want to pass on to other women. Like that to me is the legacy of helping women understand that they're powerful at their core. And so that when things, when things happen, they will rock you and they'll shake you. They won't knock you down because you're so powerful at your core, right? You can stand in the power of who you are. And that's why it's so important to me that women understand the importance of having um, personal brands. Oh, that is so awesome. That is so awesome. So we want you uh, to be able to share with the audience how they can follow you uh, and also connect with your services 
as to uh, whichever one, whether it's the the leverage, uh, 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 the whether it's the ladies who leverage whatever uh, products and services, your magazine that you would like to share, how you can they can be able to connect you with connect with you with that, as well as any social media platforms, you can be able to share that with the audience, and that's something that we give back to our um, guests. We're so thankful oh, that you yeah. was a part with us today to be able to share this heartfelt it was heartfelt i felt this um <laughs> impact that you you know dif differentiate because a lot of people don't understand so mm -hmm. um we want you to be able to share that with them so they can be able to follow you after the show so they can understand and learn a little bit more about you beyond what you have um shared with us today you can be able to do that at this time Thank you so much. And thank you for having me, Diane. This has been an awesome conversation. I, I really do hope that, um, you know, speakers, women speakers take it in and just anybody who is going into business. But the easiest way, if you want to get in contact with me, go to kellycharlescollins.com, all one word. You can get, you can find all the, the avenues to get to all the different <laughs> things from there, kellycharlescollins.com. Um, and on Facebook, I'm Kelly Charles Collins. So that's those are the easiest ways to get to me okay perfect and so they can get the the link yeah. from step one to step two step yeah. three that's my fine. book is where's my book so this is the this <clears throat> is my latest book um unapologetic af 34 ways to unleash your inner badass it's on amazon but um okay. you can also get it by going to kellycharlescollins.com anything about me you can my speaking and all the stuff you can go there Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Just one step, one button, one knob. That's awesome. So thank you so much, Kelly, for being with us on today on Women Who Rock With Success Media. Ladies, we will see you all next Thursday at 9 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you, and everyone have a wonderful day. You too. <laughs>